let me introduce myself hello everyone my name is anjana ranjan and i am a phd student from the university of south pacific in the department of school of information technology engineering mathematics and physics here the topic for my presentation is improved control for fractional order and non minimum phase integrating plants using a fractional imc and sp structure next we can move on to the layout of my presentation it consists of eight main sections starting from the problem statement then background objectives proposed system design tuning guidelines simulation results and discussion conclusion and future scope let's before moving on to the problem statement let us discuss about what is an integrating processes so the process which have at least one pole at the origin are called integrating process they are non self regulating in nature and if they are disturbed from their equilibrium condition the process output will vary continuously with time the presence of considerable time delay also makes the task more complicated we can see some examples like a boiler steam drum and bioreactor so moving on to the problem statement we know most of the industrial process are complex in nature and if the process is an integrating process and if it delay it will be more difficult for, uh, it will be more challenging in designing the uh, controller uh, in designing the controller design so some of the previous methods that developed may not give a good performance in terms of set point change or the load disturbance sometimes the the input usage may not be smooth so that it may cause wear and tear of the operating valve or it may not work with the parameter uncertainty or sometimes it may have used hit and try uh, hit and trial approach for selecting the uh, tuning parameters or it cannot be applied for all forms of integrating plants uh, including the fractional plants as well next mm -hmm. moving on to the background here we have used the concept of uh, imc and sp imc internal model control and sp smith predictor so imc is an effective method for uh, designing and implementing the robust controllers since a controller explicitly contains a model of the plant that is why it is called as in internal model control so among the model based tuning methodologies like imc technique it has got considerable importance uh, for controlling various uh, industrial chemical process because it requires only one tuning parameter by properly selecting the tuning parameter one can get the desired performance with lower overshoot and uh, faster settling time so the effectiveness of the imc design has made our proposed method more attractive uh, next is the time delays so the time delays and transport lags they are inherent in various uh, chemical processes so it occurs when there is a time lag between the control action and its influence on the system so controlling such process is challenging because uh, this delays causes linear phase shift that limit the control bandwidth and it will affect the closed loop stability so in such cases uh, smith predictor is accepted as one of the most frequently used control structures in the control of the time delayed processes so in our proposed work we have used both the concepts of imc and sp next we can discuss about the objectives <laughs> for uh, tuning we have used two tuning parameters one is the fractional order a parameter and another one fractional filter time constant so the fractional of the parameter it is obtained based on the gain margin and phase margin specifications and the fractional filter time constant that is obtained based on the desired performance constraint so compared to the previous methods uh, presented uh, uh, here we are using less tuning parameters and the results show good external load disturbance rejection capability and also it can handle the presence of noise here the robustness test is also observed by changing the time delay and the gain next we can move on to the proposed system design so here the figure on the right represents the proposed structure imcsp 
uh, fractional order IMC based SP structure. So here uh, it starts from RS. RS represents the uh, step signal. Uh, so RS represents the reference, reference signal. Here for all the analysis, for all the case studies, we have considered the step signal uh, for all the analysis. And uh, N of S is a measurement signal. And D of S is the load disturbance. And uh, GP of S is the actual plan. And uh, GM of S is the uh, model of the process without delay. So here we have considered three types of plans here. First one is simple integrating, that is uh, k into e raised to minus theta s by s, where k denotes the open loop gain and theta represents the time delay. And next one is the fractional double integrating plan, that is k into e raised to minus theta s by s raised to 2 plus uh, mu 1, where mu 1 is a fractional order, its value should be in the range between 0 to 1, it should be less than 1. And the finally, the non-minimum phase integrating type plan. So a system is a non-minimum phase, or inverse. Uh, it is if it, uh, it shows a non-minimum phase or inverse response. If at least uh, uh, one zero lies on the right side of the S plane. So here we are considering the non-minimum phase integrating type with positive zero, and it is denoted as k into one minus s z into e raised to minus theta s by s into twice plus one. And after approximated with the first order Taylor series approximation, here we get k into e raised to minus uh, theta plus z into s by s into tau s plus 1. To note that uh, this, uh, this approximation holds good for uh, small values of 0, z. Here z, z represents a 0 and tau represents the uh, time, con uh, time constant. And uh, finally, the robustness field. R of s and its equation is given by 1 by tau f s, f s plus 1 and it helps in improving the regulatory response of the system. So a small value of tau f uh, is fast regulatory response and a small settling time. If you select the high value, it can result in more settling time and sluggish response. So after a numerical study on all case studies, on all integrating plants, uh, uh, tau f is uh, directly related as uh, theta and here we have considered toy value of toy as theta only. Uh, next, we can move on to the proposed controller. So, in the last few years, we know the design of the fractional order PID has been the uh, subject of many investigations because of this additional flexibility. Uh, but sometimes, uh, because of the additional parameters, it results in the tuning of the controllers to be more complex. Uh, so another version of fractional controller is also utilized in literature uh, recently. That is fractional order P, uh, TID controller. That is fractional order tilt integral derivative controller. And its equation is represented as GC of S is equal to KT into 1 by S raised to 1 by N plus KI into 1 by S raised to alpha plus KD into S raised to mu. Where KT, KI and KD are the corresponding gains and 1 by n alpha and mu are the fractional orders so because of this uh, uh, this kt into 1 by s raised to 1 this 1 by s raised to 1 by n is a tilt component because because of this tilt component it helps in the tuning to be simpler and it helps in quick disturbance reduction and it minimizes the parameter uncertainty so here in the proposed system we are using the fractional tilt order integral derivative controller but with only using one tuning parameter, that is beta, instead of these three, we are using only one tuning parameter. So the final proposed controller de uh, design equation can be stated as uh, GC of S is equal to KT into 1 by S raised to beta plus KI into 1 by S raised to beta minus 1 plus KD into S raised to 2 minus beta. Then, uh, this is the in the table uh, we can see the controller setting obtained uh, based on the IMC design principle for all types of integrating plants. The design in which how the controller settings obtained and the choice of beta uh, is explained in detail in our previous work uh, improved control of integrating cascade processes with time delays using fractional order IMC with SP. Uh, 
Next, we can move on to the moving guidelines. Uh, the basic definitions of gain margin and phase margin. Normally, we are using gain margin, phase margin, and maximum sensitivity, which are considered as the important parameters to access the stability and the robustness of the control system. But here we have considered that the gain margin and phase margin. So gain margin, it is a measure of how much additional gain a system can tolerate before it can it become unstable. So it is denoted as a GM and is given by the reciprocal of the uh, magnitude of open left transfer function at phase crossover frequency. The frequency at which uh, phase of the open loop transfer function is uh, 180 is called as a phase crossover frequency. And the phase margin, it is denoted as phi m. And it is a measure of how much phase lag uh, a system can tolerate at a system gain crossover frequency before it becomes unstable. So the gain crossover frequency, omega gc, denoted as omega gc, is a frequency at which the magnitude of the loop transfer function is uh, unity. So based on these uh, four definitions, uh, relations have developed based on the uh, gain margin phi, uh, gain margin gm, phase margin phi m, lambda the fractional filter time constant, and the beta the fractional order, mm -hmm. and that is uh, represented as in equations one and two. So, uh, next is a final tuning based on the performance index. So, so the performance criterion uh, it is defined by the following cost function uh, uh, that is j minimum of lambda to fulfill the requirements of uh, three conditions that is one is control signal variations then integral absolute error and finally the settling time so here uh, we have this, this uh, next represents the tuning steps that we followed in this proposed system design so they are first of all choose phi m that is uh, phase margin and gain margin and we have to compute beta uh, to satisfy those equations uh, that we shown in the previous slide one and two and then calculate the uh, force function from uh, this equation three for suggested a range of lambda then we have to choose a lambda for the lowest force function value obtained from the equation three then uh, finally we have to obtain the controller parameters as per the required plan type Next, uh, these are the indicators uh, that we have used uh, to, uh, to compare the performance of the of the system the first one is the rise time it is a time required uh, for the response to rise from the zero percentage to 100 percentage of its final value and is denoted as tr then settling time it is the time required for the response to reach steady state uh, for the response to reach the steady state within the specified tolerance band value and then integral absolute error iae so when we determine the performance of the system it is often helpful to consider how large the error from the set point response is and there are many ways to do um, ways to do like this like integral absolute error, IT, SC, IA, um, IAC, etc. But here we have considered IAE here. So uh, this method spe uh, specifically adds up all the errors from the set point over time. Then last one we have uh, taken is total variation. Uh, that is uh, to evaluate the input usage. We compute the total variation of the input signal. That is the sum of the moves up and down. And it is a good measure of the smoothness of the signal, and it should be as small as possible. And next, we can move on to the uh, example sections. Uh, first, we are considering the integrating plus time delay plant, GP of this, uh, 0 0.002 into e raised to minus 3 s by s. So here, uh, our proposed method is compared with the DAS et al. work. In their technique, uh, they have used an uh, inner loop PD controller that is based on the user-defined uh, gain margin and phase margin specifications and the outer loop PID controller designed with the frequency loop shaping. So total of five controllers and one filter, that is the additional set point filter, uh, have used in their proposed design. Compared to their approach, we have only used two controllers and one, uh, two filters. And also we can see overshoot in both set point and load disturbance response in their method. That can be seen on the left side. 
In addition to that, uh, the table, uh, the response from the, the analysis from the table also shows the proposed method produces better values in terms of uh, rise time, settling time, I, A, E, and T, B. So the robustness of the controller is also observed uh, by adding a perturbation uncertainty in both time delay and the gain. That is 20 percentage time, uh, 20 percentage is added. Uh, to both time delay and gain and uh, obtain the response. So the from this uh, response on the right side, uh, we can see uh, the DAS et al. work lead to oscillatory response. So the compared to the, uh, the, uh, the DAS et al. work, our method uh, shows better response in, uh, in terms of all means robustness and the numerical analysis too. Next one is the Next example is the fractional order, double integrating plus time delay. Uh, here, first time in literature, we are considering the uh, double in fractional integrate, double integrating plan with time delay. That is e raised to minus 5s by s raised to 2.2. Here, we have taken mu1 as 0.2. So, based on the proposed method, uh, we have checked the output with and without the set point filter and can conclude that good output can be seen with uh, without the presence of the set point filter that can be seen on the left side or uh, uh, left side figure even the numerical analysis from the table also shows best performance and uh, we have uh, we did per perturbation test also with a 10 percentage change in time uh, time delay and gain and, and the the corresponding output is shown on the right side second figure and it also shows a good response uh, and the final and we can move on to the final example that is integrating second order plus time delay plus zero that is a gp of s is equal to 0 0.547 into 1 minus 0.418s into e raised to minus 0.1s uh, by s into 1.06s plus 1. So here after, approxim after approximating uh, with the Taylor series, uh, we convert uh, this uh, I is of PTD PZ into integrating second order plus time delay plant and uh, we did the simulation, we did the analysis. So we have compared uh, this work with the uh, Divakar and Kumar and uh, Dogruver method. So in Divakar and Kumar method, they have used a PID controller with fourth order filter. In addition to that, a fourth order set point filter is also added in order to remove the overshoot. The controller parameters are obtained using polynomial approach. In the Dogruver method, the IPD-based uh, Smith predictor structure is used and the controller parameters are obtained using the equilibrium optimization algorithm. And extra PD controller is also used for the disturbance rejection. Hence, uh, here also with less controllers itself, we can see a good response in terms of both servo as well as regulatory response that can be seen in the first two figures. And after applying the 10 percentage change, uh, in perturbation change, uh, test in the uh, 10 percent change in time delay and the gain. Also, we can see uh, a good response on, that can be seen on the right side. And uh, we can see the second, that is the Dogruer method failed in the perturbation test. In addition to that, uh, we, uh, we have performed uh, the controller per, uh, effect to measurement noise also, and that is shown in the uh, in these slides, the two figures. So we can see that the a large effect in controller variations in the Divakar and Kumar work, and also from the table shown, uh, the quantitative analysis uh, shows superior results uh, in terms of uh, TV and uh, better res response in terms of uh, uh, rise time, settling time, and uh, IAE. Uh, next, ending with the conclusion, uh, here we uh, developed a hybrid structure combining both the IMC and the SP that uh, will work for all classes of integrating plants. So the main highlight is that here we are only using two tuning parameters which follow good robustness uh, under significant disturbance input and parameter perturbation. And the selection task is, uh, becomes manageable using the balance cost function and uh, gain margin phase margin relationship. 
and also the main advantage is that uh, there is either no or minimal overshoot even without a set point filter that we have shown in the second example um, then the findings uh, demonstrate uh, good robust stability improved control effectiveness and uh, disturbance reduction above all uh, this method will provide a considerable effort uh, towards a fractional order control in industrial use Awesome. And uh, the final, the future scope. Uh, research can be done on develop a fractional order uh, control of plant, uh, for plants with delay, uh, despite the complexity of the Smith predictor. Uh, he, and also, here the internal load disturbance is not covered uh, in, in our study, but uh, some new techniques can be implemented for that. And also, as a relevant extension of the suggested methodology. So further study can be done on unstable models and higher order plan models. That's all. Thank you. Any queries? Thank you for informative presentation. It's okay. time for questions. Can you show uh, the control action in uh, discrete time? Controller equations in discrete time. Discrete time. Yeah, we the can uh, develop in controller the... equations. Can you show? Controller equation uh, in discrete time. Discrete time. No. In continuous in discrete. Because uh, we are uh, we we develop the equation for the continuous time, but uh, later on we can do it for the discrete time too. Uh, this is the controller okay. equation that developed uh, for the uh, co continuous. This is the equation, controller yeah. equation. Exactly. It is a good suggestion, but at this moment, uh, the, all the analysis and observations we obtained for continuous time uh, yes. controller design. But later we can do it. Mm. Yes, this is controller equation, but uh, they are in continuous time. Yes, correct. Yes. Yeah. Dear Mr. Chairman, dear colleagues, my name is Alexander Mitov. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Hydrodynamics and Hydraulic Machines at Faculty of Power Engineering and Power Machines in Technical University of Sofia. I would like to present to your attention an article on the subject linear quadratic H infinity. Filter control of axial piston pump. The article contains introduction. Second section presents axial piston pump with proportional valve. Third section consists linear quadratic controller design. Fourth section is H infinity filter design. Uh, Alexander, you uh, you should uh, hide the second uh, screen. We we see two screens. Or increase the size. But I don't have any possibilities to. I correct it. So you can continue. Okay, thank you. The fifth section is experimental results and the final section is conclusion. A modern control method for a known type of variable displacement axial piston pump intended for application in open circuit hydraulic drive system is uh, presented. In developed control system, the conventional hydromechanical controller is replaced by a digital controlled electrohydraulic proportional spool valve. This valve is actuator of swash plate uh, swivel angle, which uh, regulate the displacement volume, respectively the flow rate of the pump and the uh, generation of the control signal to the valve from a classic electronic amplifier is uh, replaced by a real-time control system that 
make it possible uh, rapid prototyping of different control, control algorithms. The developed system was implemented as a laboratory test bench on which uh, various control laws were studied in previous works. And the results of design, implementation, and experimental investigation of linear quadratic regulator with H infinity filter are shown. The control performance of linear quadratic H infinity control was investigated not only in simulation condition, but also when controlling the pump on the laboratory test bench. The main goal of this uh, article is to present the design implementation and experimental investigation of linear quadratic regulator with uh, H infinity filter for control of open loop axial piston pump. Second section, present the plan description, which is uh, realized as a laboratory test bench to conduct the experimental study. The development schematic solution of the test bench consists of variable displacement axial piston pump type A10 VSO produced by Rexroth Bosch Group, which is uh, designed for open circuit hydraulic drive system. The displacement volume of the pump is approximately equal to 80 cubic centimeter, and the pump is equipped with uh, electrohydraulic proportional valve type VT DFP used to control the displacement volume by changing the source plate's wheel angle of the pump. In parallel of which, a conventional hydromechanical pressure controller type DR is connected, which uh, serves to limiting the pressure of the pump, for example, in emergency mode for uh, electrohydraulic system. The proportional valve is controlled by an external electronic amplifier type VT5041, which uh, receives a reference signal from a program logic controller. The table contains the base component of the test bench, that is axial piston pump type 8 and VSO, proportional spool valve, which is a three way two position proportional valve, conventional hydromechanical pressure controller type DR, external electronic amplifier, microcontroller type MC012, which is a standard 32-bit platform of Danfoss for mobile application, USB CN network, and uh, gear flow meter. The pictures present the, the real implementation of the laboratory test bench in Department of Hydrodynamics and Hydraulic Machines. The next section presents linear quadratic controller design. Due to the lack of priori information in this study, a numerical model is obtained by identification procedure. Another reason to use this approach is that, in addition to the description of plant dynamics and noises in wide working range, the detailed description of identification procedure is uh, described in our previous work. Here only finally obtain state space six order model and some validation results are presented. Uh, the two output one input model of axial piston pump is uh, described as a formal description where U is a pool suite modulated signal applied to proportional valve. Y is the output signals for pump flow rate and pump pressure and the uh, matrices F, G, K, C, D are model parameters which estimated values are shown. The development structure for open loop identification experiment is uh, depicted. The random input signal generator generates the values of full suite modulated duty coefficient that uh, control proportional valve. As a result, the proportional spool valve feedback loop changed the swash plate wheel angle, which uh, determined the displacement volume, respectively flow rate of the pump. The main Simulink model used for identification experiment is depicted in the next figure. It's a realized uh, hardware in the loop solution in which the identification signal 
is uh, generated by a simulink model that works in the blocking mode at the host workstation. The low-level drivers and communication services are embedded uh, in the program logic controller. The real-time synchronization between uh, both systems is uh, guaranteed by, by our custom protocol implementation. The next figures present uh, correlation test of residuals for sixth order axial piston pump model and uh, comparison between measured outputs and model output for uh, sixth order axial piston pump model. As can be seen from figures, the estimated model passed the residual error test, which uh, means obtained parameters estimates are uh, unbiased and the uh, result for Comparison between model and measured outputs are obtained by simulation focus. They shows performance of estimated model that uh, describes sufficiently well planned dynamics for uh, both output uh, channels. The block scheme of uh, design control system is presented in figure. The plant model is extended with extra discrete time integral state, uh, where the sample time is equal to 0 0.01 time, uh, second. R is a flow rate uh, reference signal, and the extended uh, plant description is obtained as uh, next expression. According to linear quadratic control design framework, the control signal is formed by U, where uh, KI is uh, controller integral J and, and KP is proportional state feedback part of controller. And uh, to obtain a control of parameters for following optimization problems should be solved uh, by minimum of J. It's well known that the control uh, KP is obtained uh, where uh, matrix P is a positive definite solution of discrete time matrix algebraic Riccati equation. The obtained regulator coefficient are present. The fourth section consists of H infinity filter design. The design of H infinity filter is uh, performed according to plant model. And the uh, following objective function is uh, defined by J, where then the S, Q, and R are uh, weighted positive definite matrices that are chosen by a designer for a given problem. Taking into Next expression, the new criteria is obtained by J, thus uh, design task is of uh, min-max uh, optimization problem. The optimal solution is obtained as X and uh, KF is uh, filter gain and PF is positive definite solution of uh, discrete time matrix algebraic Riccati equation. After that, we obtain the result, the resulting uh, filter gain, AF. In the next three figures, the sensitivities of uh, linear quadratic H infinity filter control system are uh, presented for output sensitivity, complementary sensitivity, and control signal sensitivity. As can be seen from figures, the control system is uh, insensitive to low frequency, low disturbance. For example, the influence in pump flow rate of disturbance with frequency 0 0.01 radians per second will be suppressed uh, 100 times. Also, the control signal will track flow rate references with uh, frequency up to 1 radians per second the control signal is uh, insensitive to measurement noise. The next section present uh, experimental results. 
the control implementation is done through real-time simulink model, which is depicted in figure. The experimental results during uh, different loading conditions for loading condition two and uh, three. For the loading valve opening of two millimeters, the reference signal is with amplitude of three liters per minute flow rate and the closed loop system successfully execute the commanded reference with uh, set leak time in the range of few sample steps. Loading condition four and comparison of control signals of um, closed loop system with uh, linear quadratic controller during different loading condition. The right figure uh, compares the control signal for various loading conditions and uh, we can see that uh, oscillation in the flow rate channel are not uh, amplified in the control values. Pump output pressure of the closed loop system at different loading condition and uh, proportional spool valve position signal. The loading pressure varying between 20 bars for 5 millimeters opening up to 130 bars for 2 millimeters opening of loading uh, throttle valve. The upper limit is in the range of action of system pressure lead valve. This range of pressure variation demonstrates that uh, selected loading levels span the full working range of axial piston pump in order to confirm the reliable closed loop operation. In conclusion, the main contribution of this uh, paper is to develop an embedded system for linear quadratic and H infinity filter control of axial piston pump with uh, proportional valve. In contrast to standard linear quadratic control that use the common filter to obtain state HMS, the developed algorithm used the H infinity filter to estimate plant states. In this way, a smaller quantity of a prior information about noises is uh, needed. The experimental results show the workability of the developed system and the transient responses are insensitive with respect to low condition that shows the robustness of linear quadratic H infinity filter axial piston pump control system. Final, the authors would like to thank the research and development sector at Technical University of Sofia for financial support. Thank you for your thank attention. You. Thank you, Alexander, for excellent presentation. It's time for questions. Uh, Alexander, I uh, will respond to this uh, question. A little bit louder, please. I will respond to this question, not you. Okay. Uh, the main benefit uh, to use of H infinity filter is uh, that uh, it uh, use uh, use less info a priori information uh, than uh, standard common filter, which is the, uh, we we do not uh, have to know um, to know uh, uh, variance of uh, noises, uh, kind of noises, their probabilities. Uh, mean values and so on. And the uh, the um, obtained controller is robust. We plan to uh, plan to uh, plan to investigate it uh, robust performance and uh, robust stability. But uh, the experiment shows that it is robust. Uh, the world conditions is very white, uh, uh, which uh, we test the the controller. Uh, this is load uh, from uh, one millimeter to open the valve to five millimeter, which is uh, at maximal positions. And the control performance are almost the same. Great. Another question?
Доцент Полева. Ви получавате идентификация на резидио ерор. Това включва не само нойзи. Това включва модел динамикс, нойзи, рандъм дистърбанси и така нататък. И дизайна Калман филтър и H-Infinity филтър в същото нойзи и резултатът с H-Infinity филтър са лучше. Another questions? No. Thank you very much for your presentation. We have received the following certificate for our participation and presentation. Thank, thank you, Mr. Slavov. I would like to thank the conference organization committee for their invitation to participate in this uh, conference about automatics, robotics and artificial intelligence 2023. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Andrei Yonchev and I'm an associate professor PhD from the Technical University in Sofia, Bulgaria. And I would like to share with you the following presentation on the topic local perturbation bounds for the LMI based <clears throat> discrete linear quadratic regulator problem for differential algebraic systems. First, I would like to continue with an overview of the presentation. First, I will start with an introduction and uh, the objective of the paper, then I will mention a few words about the linear matrix inequalities and also dif the differential algebraic systems. Then I will proceed with the local perturbation analysis of the discrete linear quadratic regulator problem for the singular systems using the LMI approach. Actually, the problem setup will be described and discussed. Um, then I will obtain the linear sense the results from the linear sensitivity analysis and uh, the obtained theoretical results will be illustrated with the uh, numerical examples. And finally, I will finish my presentation with some concluding remarks. As an introduction, I would like to say that many control problems have uh, simple reformulation in terms of uh, linear matrix inequalities. And this fact is uh, not surprising since the LMIs are direct byproducts of the Leponov based criteria. And actually, the linear quadratic regulator problem is a good illustration of the LMIs usage. In general, there is a lack of methods to deal with sensitivity analysis using linear matrix inequalities. That is why, in this paper and presentation, The aim is to obtain perturbation bounds for the matrix inequalities determining the linear quadratic regulator problem for the discrete differential algebraic systems. First, a few words about the linear matrix inequalities. It is, it is an expression of the following form where X is the unknown vector. We have F of X is positive definite. Linear matrix inequalities have many applications. For example, uh, LMI's feasibility, optimization with LMI constraints, and etc. And in control theory, LMI's have also many applications like uh, an <clears throat> investigation of asymptotic stability, simultaneous stabilization of linear systems for automatic control, H2 nominal performance, H infinity synthesis, and also many other applications. This uh, is due to the fact that there are powerful solution methods, especially the interior point method, 
which is used to solve the problems based on LMIs. And also software packages exist like Sedumi, LMI2, LMI2 box and etc. Uh, then I will proceed with a few words about the differential algebraic systems. So we consider the following discrete time descriptor system given in state space for if we pay attention, we have the matrix E, which is singular and non invertible. And uh, this matrix causes many problems in investigating such uh, systems. In literature, standard uh, transformation form and representation is the Weierstrasse normal form. So the initial singular system we have to represent into Weierstrass normal form. It consists of two equations, uh, the differential one, difference actually one, corresponding to the fast variables and an algebraic one corresponding to the slow variables. In the second equation, we see that uh, the new potent matrix exists, which uh, has a very important um, place in uh, reducing the index of the, con of the in singular system. And then I proceed with the state evolution of the singular system in Weierstrass in normal form. The first equation for the difference uh, subset of variables is uh, known, let's say, but the second equation, algebraic, algebraic one, is given, and especially <clears throat> in the continuous time cases, the Dirac delta function appears, and this uh, causes uh, impulses, which should be avoided in the controlled systems. Then I proceed with uh, controller formulation and uh, the optimization problem. We consider the transformed uh, system into Weierstrass a normal form, but we stay on the subspace of the differential variables. We have to calculate uh, linear quadratic regulator problem, minimizing the following cost function. Of course, the <clears throat> performance functions Q and R are chosen uh, correctly. We have to find the quadratic Lyapunov function, which is positive definite. Of course, we have its first derivative is negative definite. What we have to do is um, to transform the uh, problem statement into an LMI form. The first equation, which uh, we see above, obviously is not an LMI because here we have two unknown matrices the Lepunov uh, function P1 and the controller. So this, LMI, uh, this uh, inequality is not linear. It is necessary to use uh, sure complement argument and also some uh, similarity transformations in order to <clears throat> transform the initial problem statement to a linear quadratic uh, re regulator problem, which is based on, based on solutions of linear matrix inequalities. We also introduce new variables, which are in fact the solutions of the inequalities which we appear. Finally, we are able to obtain an LMI, which should be further solved and estimated and uh, investigated. The problem setup of the linear matrix inequalities and uh, perturbation analysis is connected with introducing perturbations in the data. These perturbations affect the solutions of the LMIs and also these perturbations affect the feasibility of the considered LMI problem. You see the first inequality with perturbations uh, the inequality below is the nominal LMI, which is used further into perturbation analysis. We introduce perturbations in the data of corresponding size of acceptable size between 10 on the power of minus 4 to 10 on the power of minus 8. Since we perform linear local perturbation analysis, in the derivation procedure we have to annihilate the terms of second and third order, higher order. Here we see two expressions. Uh, the expression below 
<clears throat> consists of uh, perturbations in the data which affect the LMIs solutions and the feasibility of the LMIs. And uh, <clears throat> uh, Delta Q introduces only perturbations with the LMI solution which come as an effect of the perturbations in the data. We have further to use uh, Chronicare product and uh, vector matrix uh, representations in order to obtain the desired expressions and the desired bounds. This uh, is done here. Finally, we an obtain an expression where um, an inequality, inequality is, is obtained after introducing a suitable right-hand side. And finally, we obtain the relative perturbation bound for the first solution of the considered LMI. We also um, use H2 norm and we use a relative perturbation bound, not absolute, because uh, it's better for the illustration of results. And below, here we see the individual condition numbers. Their size should be as small as possible in order to ensure feasibility of the LMI based linear quadratic regulator problem. So, feasibility is very important when we apply perturbations. In a similar way, we perform perturbation analysis in the second, uh, solu in the second known solution of the LMI based linear quadratic regulator problem. Below, we see the perturbations in the data and also there is one term which consists of only perturbations in the LMI solution. In a similar way, we finally obtain the relative perturbation bound for the considered solution. We use H2 norm and below are the corresponding condition numbers which should be as small as possible in order to ensure since feasibility of the LMI-based problem. The obtained theoretical results will be illustrated using a numerical example. We consider a singular system taken from the literature. Uh, I forgot to tell that the <clears throat> we apply a controller, doesn't matter, LQR, H-infinity in general, in order to make the closed loop system not only stable and with good performance, but also with index one in order to annihilate the impulses which appear. This is, uh, we assume that this is done here. We apply perturbations in the data of the corresponding size, as I said, to um, annihilate second and higher order terms because here we perform linear perturbation analysis. We obtained results which are put in the following table. For the different size of perturbations in the second and fourth column, we have the real relative perturbations. And in the third and the fifth column, we put the calculated using the <coughs> proposed approach, the local perturbation bounds. What we see is that the local perturbation bounds are close, very close to the real relative perturbation. So actually, uh, we can uh, replace the real relative perturbations with the calculated local bounds. As a conclusion, I would like to say that we have studied uh, local perturbation analysis of the discrete LMI-based linear quadratic regulator problem for the differential algebraic systems. We obtained individual condition numbers of the considered LMIs there as small as possible in order to um, achieve feasibility. And also we obtained uh, tight perturbation bounds for the LMIs determining the problem solution. The application of the obtained theoretical results which are expressed using a uh, numerical example can be applied in these directions. We can uh, use the perturbation bounds in the results to analyze feasibility and performance of the considered control problem in presence of perturbations in the system and the controller. 
thank you for your attention. I would like also to thank to the research and development uh, sector in the Technical University and Sofia for the financial support. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your excellent presentation. Okay, well, uh, this is uh, the topic of our work is model free method based on cost functions for dynamic measurement improvement. It is uh, now we are working together on uh, this topic with Tony Salov, uh, Chairman, and uh, Ivan Mokoski. Uh, so, speed and accuracy remain uh, primary limitations when it comes to dynamic measurements. To overcome those limitations, all the base. Okay. Speed and accuracy remain one of the primary limitations when it comes to dynamic measurements. To overcome those limitations, uh, we can consider data measurements as uh, dynamic uh, processes and sensors as dynamic systems. Um, in this way, the task for improving dynamic measurements can be transformed into a task for uh, estimating an unknown input uh, signal. Uh, in, in literature, there are many methods for improving dynamic measurements. And uh, based on the a priori information that they require, they can mainly be uh, divided into uh, types, model free based methods, which uh, require less a priori information and model-based methods, which uh, require more accurate information. Uh, in this work, uh, my estimation of time-varying measurement model is performed by a modified linear regression model. Um, we using the cause orthogonal uh, method. And the uh, regressive <coughs> squares are with, with the concentration of the correlation matrix, which uh, uh, helps uh, acquire the online Using information. So we're using a model free based method. And uh, finally, a lower model order is estimated, uh, and that performance of the real time estimation procedure is achieved. So uh, the measurement quantity is formed by equation y, 1, where y is the sensor output, k is the DC gain of the sensor. U macron is the, the quantity that we are interested in, the unknown input, which we <coughs> have to estimate. Uh, y transient is the transient response of the sensor. And the uh, last parameter is the uh, Gaussian white noise modeling the error. So uh, model two describes the sensor transient response, Y transient, in detail. It is formed as a difference by each of the measurements of the center. Uh, the combination of one and two leads to the universal regression model, which is again easy to use in the recursive first estimation. Um, here is the, the, pro the proposed method, uh, Z, uh, the Gauss basis in Z domain. And I will not uh, go into details here because it's, uh, we don't have time. Uh, but we will see what's going on later. The cost functions are represented as a weighted sum of basis functions in five, where the cost expansion coefficients theta are uh, evaluated from six. And after expansion model seven of the standard transit response, which we saw, is uh, transformed into eight. So now we have the form that we can use uh, the code space functions. Mm. From eight, we are transformed. We are transforming it into nine, um, where here we have the algorithm of estimating the x parameters, which is the the calls method total function similar detail. So we have the transformation of the regression model from the first uh, one that we had previous to the 11th equation with the corresponding parameters. And uh, now with this form we can use it. We can use the recursive least squares method with a constant trace of the covariance matrix, which will uh, trace the changes in, uh, in uh, behavior of the dynamics of the system. Um, what 
we have here is a mass measurement process model, the differential equation. On the left, uh, the capital M is not the mass that we are trying to estimate, that is the quantity of interest, with a small letter M is the mass of the platform that we are weighing it on. Then we have the constant C, which is the coefficient of elasticity. D is the damping coefficient. G, the last constant, is the gravitational constant. And this is all that uh, we need for a differential equation. If, as you can see, it's of second order. So once we have added uh, the, the input, uh, the quantity of interest, it will be at least a third order, so that's why we start with a third order estimation. And uh, the values of the mass in our experiment are va varied according to the, the values on the right uh, about the figures. So in the figures you can see, we can see the, the, the blue line is the actual measurement, which is uh, very noisy, very um, so and uh, with the green we have uh, first uh, only the recursive least pairs estimation with the basic model of the process which uh, still uh, is uh, achieving smoother uh, estimations but it's still not good enough so that's why we have with the red uh, cost estimation uh, and on the right we have a detailed comparison between uh, the recursive least squares estimation and codes estimation for the third order model over there. So as you can see, the recursive least squares estimation with the third order is still far from a better result. Um, yeah, here we have the... Okay, so we have to increase the order of the recursive least squares. And we have a uh, comparison between the first, uh, what we have started with, with the third uh, model order, where here the, the measurement is omitted in order to just compare both of the methods and uh, to see, to visualize the difference when uh, we have the tenth uh, model order for first three squares. The estimations are much better and much smoother, but still not achieving the results of uh, Kaut's estimation with third order. So then we have the comparison between the 10th and 13th order, where we can say that uh, it is starting to look like uh, the Kaut's estimation. So this, uh, these orders can be uh, mm, Additionally, confirmed by the loss function, which is calculated here, and we see the minimum for uh, recursive least squares, which is the green line, the green curve, is uh, for the tenth order. But as we saw, tenth order wasn't enough, so we had to increase it. Uh, also, the codes uh, functions, the codes method, is increasing its uh, loss function as the order increases, so there's no point in uh, going uh, to a higher order estimation with cross function. So now we have uh, error quantity comparison with the third order Bob methods, with third order counts and uh, tenth order recursive least squares, and uh, with third order counts and thirteenth order of recursive least squares. And as you can see, the 13th order starts to compete with the codes, but it's uh, too high order in the recursive least squares method. Which, okay, also is uh, additionally stated in the estimation set in time. If you, if you focus on the second and third row, we have uh, the sensor reading and uh, the estimation of the recursive least squares, which are almost the same. And if you focus on uh, the fourth row with the codes estimation of third order, we have uh, 
the values are with uh, times uh, two and three times more better than the sense of reading, which is starting to compare with the thirteenth order of recursive case pairs. Uh, so we have achieved really nice results only with third order of Gauss functions. And the final results are the comparison between third order of Gauss estimation and thirteenth order of recursive least squares uh, estimation. As you can see, uh, the with both methods, the, the estimations are smoother, much smoother, and much faster than the actual sensor dynamics. So mm -hmm. we have achieved a really nice process if you compare it to the uh, blue one, which is the measure of the sensor reading. In conclusion, this paper proposes a new cross function based on free method that improves the analysis of time varying measurements, which is especially applicable in the case of an oscillating measurement process with high noise to signal ratio. So the obtained results prove probability of cross function based methods and it shows its advantages, such as achieving an exact state state value of unknown measurement quantity for short time with no more than order. Um, model model. The proposed method presents possibilities for future research considering its application in real world system. Thank you. I don't have much to say. Thank you very much. It's a very informative presentation. Do you have questions, Professor Kozak? Thank you. Congratulations to the uh, advanced approach how to model. Uh, the dynamic system is compli com complex dynamics. I think that orthogonal function based on Gauss, uh, is Gauss function is very good to orientation. Non for modeling, it's possible to combine with the control. We have a, a lot of year experiences with Lager model, Chebyshev -Che orthogonal model. An application, direct application for uh, many thermal process for in the chemical industry. Uh, my question is: It is very difficult to to estimate uh, the order of this count function. You have this special procedure, or how you choose the order of the model? Ah, thank you for the words first. And uh, well, we we have started with the minimum that is necessary to in order to model the dynamics of the sensor and uh, to additionally estimate the additionally added state of uh, the input. Heuristic. So it, it will become a third order. So at first we begin with third order, and uh, then the loss function really shows us that there is. Uh, no need to increase, and also the results, uh, there is no need to increase the orders, so uh, we have like optimal results. I think this is a uh, mechanical right example is, the, is not convenient yes, it's, for, for it's this application, it's, uh, because this, this epic orthogonal, uh, orthogonal function is very convenient for the time delay processes. It's still on the simulation levels, but we will... Uh, See what this is a typical uh, example for, for um, how, how we use the advantages of this approach. No, no, can I yes. uh, respond? Uh, this is specific uh, problem. Uh, we regard uh, the improvement of measurements, of uh, speed okay. of measurements, not uh, for control or for uh, classical identification. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Orthogonal function is very good. Function. Very good uh, because uh, if uh, um, you use uh, so-called standard model free method for yeah. measurement improvement, uh, we must uh, use uh, very high, very high order. Uh, the alternative method is uh, based on common filter or some kind of uh, yeah. different from common filter estimator. But here the measurement process depends on measurement quantity. So the dynamics of measurement is uh, time varying. Yeah. 
and very we, cold. We, we cannot use so, so easy the standard common filter. We can use the extended common filter or different type of non-linear common filter, but we have these results in previous publication, good, good maybe in conference in Slovak or <laughs> Hungary. <laughs> this is very good direction. No, here is not a classical control task yeah. and, and for uh, your question uh, we have to choose properly order by some kind of uh, performance in this uh, for example a Kaike criteria yeah. or a reasoning yeah. criteria or statistical criteria of Fisher. Yes, sir. Fisher, yeah. Thank you. Uh, Professor Perf. Okay, what is the reason to choose scouts functions? For example, you can choose any yeah. other, like Pade, uh, series of presentations. And, uh, did you compare different types of approximations? Especially if you have delays in the process. Pade uh, series is dominating other counts. We have started with the recursive disk classification and uh, then we have the Laguerre like, series for the broadband system and this one is oscillating so we choose uh, post versions and this can be a ne an next my step. <laughs> <laughs> this may be a next step. step. Okay. No, my question basically uh, is why did you, did you approach Gauss? Do you have any a priori One question or two other? Good for me. Yeah, well, I said that. Thoughts <laughs> uh, is uh, good for an oscillating process, which is this one. And like it is for a well done process. That's what yes, that's of course. For example, I, yes, I like very much Legendre. Legendre? Yeah, I still, still yeah. am not familiar. Hmm? I am still not familiar. Chebyshev is good for uh, oscillating <coughs> process. Well, I give you some hints about yes. future research. Thank you. Another question? Okay, thank you again for your presentation. <laughs> you received the phone. Thank you for your presentation.